My name is Matt Black, and I'm a photographer. Hi, thanks for joining me. Matt Black is a man with a purpose. Taking a closer look at his rise to prominence is instructive in many ways. He is a guy that has spent most of his photographic life taking pictures of poverty. You could say that that subject is so early last century. Jacob Rees, uh, or Lewis Hine and Dorothy Lang covered that topic fairly comprehensively. They also all died poor themselves. For an upcoming young photographer, this probably be, wouldn't be the first choice of subject matter. But for Black, poverty wasn't a vehicle for success. Covering it was a necessity. He is now a member of the Elite Magnum Agency. He was named Time Magazine's Instagram Photographer of the Year. And he's represented by the prestigious Robert Koch Gallery. During a time in which selfies dominate social media and dress-up concepts are heralded as art, how is it possible for someone with authenticity to rise to the top of their field? Hey man, like I'm a guy who likes to work on my car. Matt Black is from California's Central Valley, a rural agricultural area in the heart of the state. He witnessed firsthand how the farm workers and their families have struggled to survive. They've been living below the poverty line for a long time. He felt compelled to draw attention to the extreme economic inequalities that he observed. Firstly in the valley and then in America as a whole. He estimates that over 46 million Americans live in poverty. For his project called The Geography of Poverty, he's traveled over 100,000 miles across 46 states and documented what he's seen in a very personal and creative manner. A small selection of the images remind me of the work of Walker Evans, Lang and others from the Farm Security Administration project. Almost a century has passed since those photographers produced their work and Black's more straight documentary images are pretty much interchangeable with theirs. That in itself gives us reason to sit up and question why society hasn't figured out a way to reduce inequality and to protect the most vulnerable. Photographically, this straightforward style of work doesn't excite me, and if he had stuck to this approach, he probably wouldn't have made much impact mainly because we are inundated by so much imagery that we don't register the content unless we are kind of enticed to engage with it. Black would obviously have been aware of this and he had built up a depth of visual knowledge. So his first bold move was his decision to develop a more subtle visual language to illustrate his subject matter. This gave him an opportunity to communicate with his audience in a manner that both grabs their attention as well as making them engage with the content. Much of his work has a feel of artistic photography. You can see that he's pushing himself to extract powerful compositions out of these fairly low energy situations. If you've ever had to try to make something dynamic within depressing environments, you'll know how difficult it is. It's easy to fall back on the well-worn photographic cliches, but he's developed a look to his photographs which is his own and is vastly different from the work of the FSA photographers. His body of work comes across as an archive of fragments that together illustrate his larger theme. They provide an oblique view of a recurrent theme. They make us want to look again, as if we have just become aware of something that registered maybe through the corner of our eye. When you look at his images together, they capture a sense of the atmosphere of these places of poverty. 
The idea of gathering fragments also reflects his objective of illustrating the collective shadow that poverty casts over the whole of the US. His more obscure approach also frees him from falling into the trap of being preachy. This is an easy trap to fall into when as a photographer you've been bombarded daily by the experiences of struggle and you've reached a level of frustration by the lack of engagement with the problem. Photography has always been attractive to zealots, people who want to save other people. He has moved his work away from the pulpit and placed it on social media as well as within art galleries. Many of his photographs feature patterns and some are works of abstract art. He manages to hold the line between art and reality within his abstractions. And you can still recognize items like power lines, fencing or oil stains. So as viewers, we are not having to guess at what he's photographing. Or he doesn't allow us to sit back and just admire the compositions. These images are actual records of the harsh realities that are associated with poverty. He's really mastered the technique of layering, especially when he populates the foreground with detail. When you look through his photographs, you might get hints of who his influences are. Obviously the FSA photographers and people like Lewis Hine, but many of the images have gritty, angry commentary similar to Robert Frank's. Weston seems present, but also the more loose shooting photojournalists like Paolo Pellegrin or Antonin Krotochville. A reaction to this approach to photographing poverty might be that he's exploiting others' hardships to achieve his artistic objectives. But the counter-argument is that without his artistry, this message would not penetrate the shield of public indifference. I noticed that some commentary about his work argued that he's inclined at times to overcook his images. But then again, what can you expect from a guy named Matt Black? But also in a time when the single social media image is king, immediate impact may be what is needed. This leads me to his second bold move. While he was producing these images, Instagram was beginning to become popular. Black initially disregarded it as a platform for sharing cute cat pictures. But when he took a closer look, he saw that it offered possibilities to photographers. He recognized the immediate nature of Instagram and its ability to draw wide audiences to his work. The mapping feature appealed to Black and he started Geography of Poverty with just 20 followers. That number has risen to 240,000. He sees the platform as a mechanism to directly connect with his audience and also to build conversations around his work. Black isn't a conventional Instagram photographer. He doesn't shoot all of his images on a smartphone. He posts a mix of iPhone and Sony RX100 images. He also only posts about every five days. He doesn't view this practice as a daily journal. He only shows images that meet his standards and also that build on his broader theme. Initially, he didn't have high expectations and he wondered whether people would want to engage with him over these issues. He initially favored the square format for his Instagram posts and the consistency I think helped him to establish a kind of brand that isn't the right word for what photographers do. But I think it's the best word that I can think of right now to explain what I'm trying to say. 
To his surprise, he found that Instagram users valued Substance and started engaging with him and his work. Instagram is a new form of photographic communication. Unlike the book or exhibition format, it allows an audience to have more intimate real-time involvement and the long-term project in particular offers photographers a way of drawing followers into their process. Matt Black's success is a valuable story, especially when you take into account that his theme is not a sexy one. He's achieved this success by a combination of talent, innovation and dogged perseverance. At times he's been away from home on the road for up to six months. His work is deeply personal and his images engage viewers on an emotional level. Perhaps one of the most encouraging aspects of his success for other photographers is that even if one is drawn to challenging subjects, there is still the possibility that one can find funding. He has received funding from the Pulitzer Center and others for this work. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and join me next time. Cheers.